Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of his favors and blessings that he has bestowed upon us all the time. And especially the great blessing that is coming to us, the great month of Ramadan. The great month of blessings and the great month of bounties and opportunities that are upon us. We really need to become thankful more and more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should really get excited about the coming of this month, about the approach of this month. Because of all the opportunities that Allah provides and gives to us in this month, we better be excited. You know, sometimes you may say that, well, I am happy, but I'm not that excited. How can I become that excited? Simply by reminding ourselves of a few basic offerings of this month. By reminding ourselves of some special blessings in this month, if we just remind ourselves, we would definitely be excited. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has said many, many things that, about the realities of this month that would definitely make us excited. You know, first of all, the Prophet وسلم, would start making dua and looking forward to it even two months before Ramadan. When the month of Rajab, which is the month, two months before Ramadan starts, he would make this dua in Rajab and Sha'ban, in the previous two months before Ramadan, he would say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. He would say, Ya Allah, bless us, bless Rajab and Sha'ban for us and help us to reach Ramadan. Basically, being alive and being healthy. He would make this dua for two months, almost every day. And then, when the crescent of the moon appears, he would make a special dua, Allahu Akbar, Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amni wa salam, bil amni wa salam. Ya Allah, Make this month and this crescent shine on us with safety and with iman. Wassalamati bil Islam and health and having peace and Islam. Subhanallah. He would make these kind of du'as usually in the beginning of any month, especially in the beginning of month of Ramadan. And then he would give a khutbah at the end of month of Shahban, just like this time, the last Friday of Ramadan and the last few days. He would say in the khutbah, the beginning words that, Ya ayyuhan nas, qad adhallakum shahrun azimun mubarak. O people, a tremendous month, a month which is great and full of blessings has offered it its shadows on you. It is approaching you. It is coming to you. And in another uh, hadith that you say, قَدْ أَتَاكُمْ شَهْرٌ أَتَاكُمْ شَهْرٌ رَمَضَانٌ مُبَارَكٌ That the month of Ramadan is approaching you, the month of full of blessings. And then he would explain so many other additional explanations that the month is coming in which the heavens will open. The doors of heaven, the doors of paradise will open. And the doors of hellfire will close. And the shayateen will be chained. Wow. Jannah, Jannah, paradise, which is supposed to be a dream of every Muslim, and it is. And every Muslim keeps looking forward to it. How can I make it there? Allah says that the month is coming in which the whole month doors will be open. That if you happen to depart this world, directly there, subhanallah. And the doors of hellfire that we have to be always 
fearful of and worried that lest I will end up there even for a few days, for a few hours. That will be closed. The doors will be closed. And shayateen, which are our biggest challenges and all the time whenever we want to stop a bad deed, whenever we want to start a good deed, shaitan will come with all kinds of misleading logic, misleading excuses so that he can convince us not to move towards Allah. In this month they will be chained, meaning that they will be having minimum impact on us. The Prophet says a month is coming to you in which if you do any kind of good deeds, even if you smile towards your brother or sister, it will be counted like a fard, like an obligatory act that you have done, such a big one. And if you do an obligatory act in this month, it will be counted 70 times more. Subhanallah, 70 times more rewarded. Subhanallah. The month that the Prophet ﷺ said that من صام, من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه Ramadan is the month in which if, if anybody fasts this month based on Iman, based on hope and accountability, all of their sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah, can you imagine that a month is coming in which all of my past can be forgiven? How could I not get excited about it? That such a great month is coming to me. And it's starting inshallah in a couple days. Subhanallah, if you just remind yourself of a few little things from uh, uh, the bounties of Ramadan, you have no choice but to become excited about it. And inshallah, make others excited about it. Now, how can we prepare for it, especially in the next two, three days? There are many things that we have to do. First of all, we want to check our knowledge about fasting and Ramadan. Yes, you may say, oh, you already know fasting Ramadan, I'm a Muslim already. No, no, no. There's always something to learn. Let us learn something in the next couple of days. Check the books of Ramadan fasting, the books of fiqh. Listen to some talks about Ramadan and inshallah you will learn something. You will be reminded of something that otherwise you would have not. So prepare yourself with understanding, with knowledge. And even if you are sick or if you are traveling or if you cannot fast for some chronic diseases, you still should be excited. Why? Because there are all kinds of other bounties coming to you and Allah himself has permitted you to break the fast based on his bounties and blessings. So you should still be excited that you can give fidya, uh, you can give expiation if you have chronic terminal diseases or any other issues and problems. This month is the month that we really have to develop our knowledge in such a way that we can get maximum benefit from it. Also, we have to prepare ourselves mentally and physically for receiving this month. Mentally think, thinking about all these great things and how I can prepare myself. We all know our own schedules. We all know our routines during the day. That what does my day look like in the job, in, in the family? Now, how can I adjust my schedules in this month that I can have maximum opportunities for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can I turn other activities into an act of worship in this month? And think about the timings that, for example, I want to make sure that I offer prayers on time, the five daily prayers. I want to make sure that I pray together in jama'ah as much as possible with my family or others. I want to pray in the masjid as much as possible. I want to do some uh, other good deeds in this month. It's a month of charity. I want to give a lot of charities, inshallah, in this month. And I'm planning from now on how I can give charity in this month in different ways, uh, every day somehow or every week. And how can I prepare myself physically 
in a way that I'm really thinking about the proper meals and the proper ways of healthy fasting so that I will not burden my body in, with heavy iftars and also with many other things. So I will fast in a moderate way, in a proper way. And also, how can I prepare myself and my soul and my heart to receive the Ramadan with excitement and maintain that excitement throughout the month. And I will not let that excitement go away by sticking together with good Muslims, by sticking together to the masajid, by sticking together to some good motivational lectures and talks and programs, and by spending my time with real high quality and if staying away from all kinds of idle things, staying away from all those other entertainments and other things that just would waste my time. I have to prepare myself in all of these meanings for Ramadan. And how can we now benefit from this month in the maximum ways? First, by observing fasting and other acts of worship in this month based on objectives. Objectives. We have to always ask what is the objective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, talks about one of the main objectives of fasting. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba alaladina min kablikum la alakum tatakun. Oh Muslims, oh believers, fasting is prescribed on you as it was prescribed on people before you, is ordered on you so that you develop taqwa. So the objective of fasting is developing taqwa. Taqwa is basically becoming mindful of Allah, becoming conscious of Allah, becoming heedful of Allah, developing fear, a positive fear, fear of responsibility before, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I do all of this? How can I increase my consciousness, my mindfulness in this month? And how can I develop fear of responsibility in front of Allah in this month? So be, fast based on objectives. Second, fast based on a spirit. Let's think about it very deeply in the next few days. But how can I fast based on its spirit? You know, every act of ibadah, there is a form, there is a way to do it, and then there is a spirit behind it. Not only we want to make sure that we do it physically properly and the form of it, but also the substance of it and the spirit of it should be fulfilled. The spirit of fasting is explained by the Prophet ﷺ in a beautiful hadith that he says, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ تَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ The Prophet ﷺ said that, Whoever does not stop bad words and bad language and bad actions, he should know that Allah has no need for him or her to stop his food and his drinks. Did you get it? It's very powerful. Whoever does not stop, basically their mouth, they does not close their mouth from uh, bad language and bad words and bad action, Allah has no need for this person to close his mouth from foods and drinks. That's the real spirit of fasting. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says that a lot of people, who, they get nothing from fasting except hunger. They are just keeping themselves hungry and there's nothing more than that. And a lot of people does not get anything from tahajjud and prayers at night except sleeplessness because they are not doing it based on the real spirit of it. We want to make sure that we fast based on spirit, the spirit of fasting in Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is the month of Quran. Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month in which Quran is revealed, has been revealed. So how can I really make sure that I stick to the Quran in this month in a very beautiful way. How can I really spend a good amount of my time every single day with the Quran? How can I really learn some new verses from the Quran in this month? How can I 
read some translations and tafsir more in this month compared to others. How can I memorize some verses of Quran? How can I share the message of Quran with others around me in my job, in my workplace, in my neighborhood, in my, with my classmates? Yes, this is the month of Quran and we have to really benefit from the Quran in the best ways, in the maximum ways, inshallah. This is a month of Tawbah and month of repentance. As the hadith that I said that Allah says that all of the sins can be forgiven in this month. So how can I seek forgiveness of Allah? How can I stop some wrong things that I have been doing all along my life or in the last few years or few months that I will never repeat it again? How can I start some good deeds? This is the month of repentance. How can I get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya ayu alladheena amanu, tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. Allah says that, O oh believers, turn to Allah with a sincere re re repentance and turning to Him. So how can I make sure that I really do a true tawbah in this month, that I will be a different person after this Ramadan? I will be a different Muslim, a different degree of Muslim, level of Muslim, after this Ramadan, I will spend this month in such a way. So there are many things that we can do to inshallah benefit from this month in the maximum ways. Another thing is very important that we all make a decision now inshallah that I want to make this Ramadan a very unique Ramadan compared to any other Ramadan that I have had in my past life. I will make this Ramadan very different, very outstanding, inshallah. I will not accept to pass this Ramadan like any other Ramadan that I have had in my life. No. No matter how great Ramadans I have had in the past, this Ramadan will be greater than any other Ramadan. Each one of us should make that decision, inshallah, and commitment. That I will make this Ramadan very unique. Meaning that, I will pass this Ramadan in such a way that I really feel closer to Allah. And I get such, in such a way close to Allah and in such a way develop taqwa and in such a way I develop a knowledge of Quran that I will benefit for the rest of the year from it and for the rest of my lives. And throughout my life when I remember Ramadan of 2024, I can say that that Ramadan was really the top Ramadan in my life. And in the Day of Judgment, when Allah gives us our books of deeds, we can see that, wow, that Ramadan made such a big change in my life. So I have to do some changes in my life that I can remember for the rest of my life, inshallah, in this month. Some very, very serious changes in Ramadan in this month, inshallah, in terms of our lifestyle, in terms of our uh, preferences, likes and dislikes, in terms of our relationships, in terms of company, how to become the best, the best member of the family in this month. How can we become the best spouse, the best husband, the best wife? How can we become the best children, the best parents, the best neighbors, the best community members? How can we do that in this month in such a way that we can continue after that for the rest of the year and for the rest of the, our lives? more important than many other things. How can we make this Ramadan unique in reference to what is happening in Palestine? <coughs> While our brothers and sisters have been oppressed in a very savage manner in the last five months, and now Ramadan is starting and they continue to be bombed in a very barbaric manner. And Ramadan is starting. This Ramadan should be different for me just because of that. Throughout Ramadan, we have to remind ourselves what does Ramadan look like for my brothers and sisters in Palestine. I have all this night time that I have foods and I have drinks and I have all these things in my refrigerator full of everything. But my brothers and sisters, not only 
they fast during the day. They, they have to stay away, stay uh, without food at night, all night, most of the time. So, but they still fast during the day because of their iman and they know that Allah is supporting them. So every time you get hungry, you get thirsty, think of them. And if, some, if you face any inconveniences, think of them. That what they are, how is their Ramadan passing? How is their fasting? Think of the security and safety that you and I have to come for this Juma prayer and go to Taraweeh and go to everywhere. And they, not only they are not safe inside their houses that they can be bombed any minute, they cannot walk out that they would be targeted any minute, anywhere. Think about it throughout Ramadan. Also think about the fact that Allah is watching everyone and everybody. And Allah will definitely compensate our brothers and sisters in the best ways. And Allah will establish his absolute justice in the next life for every victim, everybody. Think about that and remember that, that all these sufferings cannot continue. They must stop and Allah will compensate all those victims and Allah will punish all those oppressors, all those invaders, all those occupiers, all those savage people who act like savage animals. Allah will punish them, definitely. We have to overcome our feeling of helplessness. We should not, in Ramadan, we should not feel helpless. We should know that this is going to happen and we should keep talking to Allah and make dua and be sure, assured that dua will be heard by Allah and will be even accepted inshallah. And keep making dua all the time as you are fasting for our brothers and sisters in Palestine and other places that they are oppressed. Keep making dua for them. And remember, be hopeful that many victories of Islam and Muslims in the history of Islam has happened in this month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan a month of freedom for Palestine. Ya Allah, make this month a month of victory for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Ya Allah, make this month a month of humiliation and punishment for the enemies of Islam, for the occupiers, for the invaders. Ya Allah, punish them and humiliate them in this month. Ya Allah, accept our dua and show us in this world even the signs of your powers in, and miracles in this month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, help all of us to develop our closeness to you in such a way that the whole Ummah come close to you and the whole Ummah become righteous people and the whole Ummah will become true Muslims. Ya Allah, make the whole Ummah of Islam true Muslims. <laughs> Ya Allah, help all of us to go home and anywhere in the next few days and ex make others excited about Ramadan and remind them about all those great things about this month. Ya Allah, accept our dua for all of us and all Muslims. Ya Allah, accept our dua. Subhana rabbika rabbil azzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha. استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين